So here I am back again in my above dictionary initial screen and I'm going to start creating my table. But before I create a table, um, quickly again, a table is composed of uh, four uh, items. One is the, the ta table object itself, meaning the name of the table. The second is the fields in the table, then the data elements and domains of the table and the, t the table characteristics or, okay, or the technical settings of the table. So um, let's quickly create our table. So for the table, I'm going to give a name zdt underscore room um, and, and I'm going to hit the create button. And this brings us to the initial screen where uh, or the create table screen. And again, guys, I don't have the specifications in front of me. So I'm going to use my own imagination. So for the short description, uh, because this is uh, room data, so I'm going to say class room master data. And um, for delivery class, again, uh, as we know, because this is already, we know that this is master data. So I'm going to select A, uh, but uh, let me quickly show you the types of uh, delivery classes that are available. So basically there is A, which is used for master and transaction data. Uh, you could also, sometimes we have tables which are C, which are customizing data. And uh, the customizing data basically customizes the functionality of the system. Uh, we also have L which is used to store temporary data, G, E, S and W. But mostly I have only interacted with A and sometimes uh, C kind of tables. Okay. So now because this is room data, which is of course master data and it's not going to be changed quite so often. So we are selecting delivery class as A. The next thing uh, which is important is how you would like to like the user to maintain the data in this table. So sometimes you would want them to maintain the table, not directly, but through programs. Then you would say maintenance allowed with restrictions. But uh, if you would like them to maintain the table directly, then you could just say maintenance allowed. Okay. And sometimes you don't want the table to be maintained directly by you, but uh, through SAP or some other source, then you would say maintenance not allowed. But here, because this is room data and we want the user to maintain it. So we are going to say maintenance allowed. Now the next thing that is important is fields and that's why I'm going to click this tab here to take you to fields. So here we can add fields into our table, which is of course the second part of the table definition. Um, in fields, uh, the first field that usually we add to a table is uh, MANDT and this is going to be a key field and uh, we're going to mark it as initial also and its data type is MANDT, M-A-N-D-T, okay. So uh, guys, uh, the reason we add this client field here is um, is to identify that the data in this table is client dependent. Okay. Now a quick quick um, talk talk on this. Basically, in an in an ideal system, right? What happens is uh, in an ideal uh, SAP landscape, we usually have three uh, boxes, three separate servers. One is for the um, develop uh, the development box. The other is the quality system, and the third is the production system. So once you do your development and the functional people do their configuration, right? They unit test it in the development environment. Then they will release it to the quality where it will be quality checked. And then once it is approved, it will be moved to production. Now, um, and that will be accessible to the users. Now, um, the quality system is basically a replica of the production system with some data jumbled up, but more or less it replicates the quality system, uh, the production system. And, um, Whatever issues that are going to happen in the production, right, with your transports, if they may happen, they would be caught early on in the quality system. That's why first you do a quality check in the quality system and then it is moved to production. But, uh, but the point is in the development system, right, uh, basically the, so the, actually that's the reason why we have three servers, quality, development, quality and production. But in the development environment, there are uh, in a group, in a team, right? There are several people working together, meaning there will be developers who will be developing. There will be um, configurators, functional people who will be doing configurations. And then at the same time, there could be other people like training team who would be doing the training um, of the users, right? So if all of them are working together to ensure that uh, they don't step on each other's toes, meaning when you're doing development, you don't want functional people to do configuration and screw up your development, right? At the same time, you don't want uh, training people don't want you to make changes to the program while they are training their users. 
So um, to ensure that this doesn't happen, SAP gives you a concept called uh, client and in a development environment, usually there are in a big client, right, or a big project, there would be like three or four clients. One could be a uh, master client or golden client where all the final configurations reside. There could be a test client where you would do your unit testing. There could be another development client where basically you're supposed to do your development work. Then there could be a um, functional client where or the configuration client where uh, functional people are supposed to do their configurations. And finally, there could be a training client or there could also be a data conversion or data upload client, right? So there are a lot of clients, but to make your data client dependent, right? We use something called as this client field, okay? So this room data is client dependent. That's why we are making it, uh, adding the client field here. So the next field that we have is the room ID, which is going to be the key of this uh, table. So I'm going to add room ID. And to say that this is the primary key of the table, I'm going to click this uh, primary key field. And also I'm going to make it uh, initial so that to know that the initial values can reside in this table. And I'm, I'm going to add a data element to this table, which is of course the one which we created early on. There, so I have added the key to this table. Now let's add all the other remaining fields. Of course, we only have two fields here. Uh, one is our room text and the other is room description. But this time guys, I want to make this uh, not a, uh, assign a data element to this, but I would like to assign a predefined type. So I'm going to click this button to, to make this, uh, to uh, say to the system that this is a predefined type. And uh, the predefined type that we are going to use is char, uh, character 20, okay. And also I'm going to add our last field which is description. which again is character uh, 120. Room description. So I have added all my fields here. Um, so I'm going to save this now as a local object. And guys, uh, because we have saved this table, right? Now that means this table is available in the data dictionary. Uh, but of course, nobody can use this table until and unless we don't activate it. Because once you activate it, then the table really um, gets generated into the dictionary and then people can use it. So, um, to if we, but before we activate the table, right? We have to do the fourth step, which is assign a um, to maintain the the correct uh, the technical settings for this table so to do that we will have to go to go uh, we will click go to and maintain the technical settings so when you do maintain technical settings here you are going to give a deliver data class to your table um, and because we know that this is master table data so i'm going to select uh, application appl0 and then the size category, because I know that there are not going to be large number of rooms, so I'm going to select uh, zero. Now, what happens by doing this is, this is the way SAP data dictionary, in when, when the actual table is created in the database, right? The system knows that this table, is because it's an application APPL zero table, it's going to store it in a certain place, and it's going to assign this much of memory space to that table. Once this uh, table gets more, beyond that right automatically another set of uh, memory will be assigned to it but this is a way better way for the system to know where exactly is your table so because now when it needs to access that table right the system knows uh, directly where this table is re is resident in the memory and it can directly go there and fetch the data okay so um, now we have maintained the technical settings i'm going to activate this or oh, sorry save it uh, come back and activate. Of course, there are some warnings this time too. Let's see what those warnings are. 
and uh, the warning says that you haven't maintained any enhancement categories to this table um, so let me quickly maintain an enhancement category to do that I think let's go to extra and then uh, enhancement category and it says the uh, table is not classified so I say okay no problem go ahead and um, I'm just going to select enhancement you can do a deep enhancement now here uh, one thing to notice is basically um, sometimes you would not want your t table to be enhanced meaning it has to be the way it is you don't want anybody to add more fields to your table okay then you would select cannot be enhanced if you if you know that your table needs only character or numeric enhancements then you would do this if you have only character types of data then you would do this and if you want your table to add, i mean in the future if you if you want uh, or you want to let your table have um, nested tables attached to it right or you want to add another field of uh, a line type or a structure directly to the table then you can say deeply enhanced enhanceable uh, but usually we keep enhanced deeply because we don't know maybe you would use nested uh, tables into this table right um, so that's why i'm using deep and i say copy so now my table uh, definition is complete again let me go and activate it so now my table is completely active i have a fully functional table so i will um, but before i back out i'll just show you uh, the help right now because this is a very base table that's why we don't have any help uh, at, or any check tables assigned to it but if you have to assign a check table right then you would select that field which you want to assign a check table which is a foreign table based foreign key you will assign it and you will click this button here okay and if you want to assign a search help to a particular field so that when you are doing a module pool you want to have a drop down there um, then you would assign a search help here okay and similarly for currency fields and quantity fields if there are any you would click this uh, tab here okay but we don't have any currency or quantity here that's why nothing is coming up so uh, we have an active table i'm going to back out from here now and this is the way how you create data elements domains and tables in in their data dictionary okay